thanks everybody and I'm joined here by colleagues Chandra here and Di here um, who so the three of us I guess have been um, involved in a project to embed teams in courses particularly online courses um, so on your tables you'll have something that doesn't look like that because Fawn Awesome didn't import. So um, you've got cards there. So can you grab your cards? Let's do a bit of a test. I've got little questions throughout the presentation. So one, one each of each colour, if that makes sense. So we're going from high tech to low tech. Okay, so has everybody got a set of each, do you know what I mean? One of each colour. Put your hand up, that's it Priscilla, <laughs> test it, okay? Have you got the right set? Yes? Only so many people have, yes, great, okay. So let's see who's in the room, who's from Griffith? See if there's any yellows, because that person doesn't know if they are or not. Okay, who's from interstate? Originally? Um, today, you know what I mean, or yesterday, for the summer. <laughs> okay, and we have, everybody knows where they're from, so there's actually quite a lot of people from interstate, right? Okay. Who has used Teams before this week? Everybody. Okay. I know Jason, I think, <laughs> asked that question this morning, but I didn't really get a sense. So there's a couple of people who didn't, haven't used Teams before this week, right? Okay. How about in learning and teaching? Who's used Teams in learning and teaching? So, um, and there's a few question marks, sort of, maybe dabbling in it, okay. So we've got a real breadth of experience here, right, of people who've used it, people who are learning to use it, and people who are thinking, will I jump in and start using it? Okay, so this, my presentation is really three lessons that, um, so I reflected on the work that we're doing in terms of talking to people about using Teams. And so these are my lessons, what, what has stuck in my mind. Um, one is it's worth doing, two, go slow to go fast, and three, be present. So let's expand on those. Okay, oh, there's those squares again. Has the social aspect made a difference to you when you're learning? So just think about that for a moment. Has the social aspect made a difference to you? Let's see. Some, Chris isn't sure, maybe a few people, maybe, maybe not. Sometimes, right? So I think back, I did an um, online masters with USQ and the discussion boards brought me to the computer. Right? So I'm a bit of a procrastinator. So, you know, I sign up for millions of MOOCs, I can't tell you how many, and haven't finished them and all that kind of stuff. But that social aspect, I was, had, my kids were little, I was working all the time, all that kind of stuff, but I kept on track because I wanted to see who said what in the discussion forum. So it mattered to me. Okay. So think back if you uh, have been around for a while and Gary talked about 22 years in um, academia. I started my undergrad degree in 1982, I was three years old. <laughs> and um, so first, first class was in Abel Smith at UQ. Who's from UQ? Green. <laughs> oh, there's some, some people. Okay, so Abel Smith, big lecture theatre, and I thought, oh my God, I'm from Ipswich, and I'm, you know, I'm not used to this big um, deal place, right? So I thought, I'm never going to meet anybody here. Like it's all too much and too big. So if you've had an experience like that, just think for a moment. How did you get from that to this? So where you felt connected, you maybe made friends, you um, could 
brainstorm, study together, all of that sort of thing. What made a difference? What made it easier when you were on campus? So just think about that for a moment. Like, okay. So in online teaching, there's a risk that we feel like this, yeah? So that we feel like we're the only person and it's just this big silence and the sky is vast and um, we don't want to venture out. We're like very tentative. So we don't want that for our online students, do we? We want them to enjoy the social aspect of learning. Okay, so it's worth doing. We know it's worth doing. And I popped in a couple of um, reports that I think say something in this space. Kathy Stone did some research about online study, particularly around equity. And quite a few speakers have mentioned accessibility in their um, presentations. And I think um, oftentimes when you look at online students, um, groups like those who are the first in family to study are highly represented, more so than on campus. Um, oftentimes it's women who are older, women who have children and are re-entering the workforce. So accessibility is a big deal. So um, Stone wrote, informal peer support opportunities make a difference to student success. They make a difference. So these people who are coming to us with their time and their money, um, we can make a difference by providing opportunities for them to connect with each other. Um, now this is from the Higher Education Academy, which is now called Advance HE, Higher, Advanced Higher Education, based in the UK. Their what's work, what works. Um, their study, they looked at a whole lot of things that wasn't just in online, but they wrote, aim to enhance student engagement and belonging. And belonging was a theme that they wrote about again and again. So that sense of belonging, that I'm here, that I'm not alone in the universe makes a difference. Oh gosh. Okay, so um, how are we doing that here um, at Griffith? This is an example from a team that includes four programs. Programs are what Griffith called degrees. Okay, so f students from four online degrees are in this one team. They have a channel each for each program and then in these particular programs they have a dedicated student support service and that student support service um, posts things like you know this is happening that's happening study tips and so on so it's not just the social connection it's being informed and in that same team this was a dream really a student posted um, and tagged the program director. Um, hey, um, Edwin, this is a video I found. And Edwin said, hey, can I use that in my course? So, oh my goodness, we're starting to, you know, co-create of content. So I just love that. And then the student came back with a GIF, which makes a difference in teams. So this is an exa another example from a course that's running at the moment. This course has, uh, is a marketing course and students, it's an individual assignment that, but we form groups or they form groups and they collaborate on a solution. And um, one team, this was the first team um, up at, earlier in the thread, they post what they created and then there's been some great feedback. So. Um, fabulous and um, they posted two solutions that right that's right and they sought feedback on their two solutions so what channels might look like this is what um, two sample courses channels are these things um, people have mentioned that earlier uh, about how they what they look like and channels really do channel the conversation at the moment we don't have private channels Everybody in the team can see everything that's in these channels, but you and the students can make announcements that are in, within the channel. So that really helps you kind of prioritise your messaging and so on. Um, and all of the 
teams that I've seen courses create have an introduce yourself channel, which is great. And an, so some have one assessment Q&A channel, others break it up. Okay, um, and, and navigation's nice and easy, you've seen that. Okay, who's been frustrated or anxious about, oh, Louisa was like, <laughs> <laughs> by the pace of change. Who has been, fr so green, red, yellow, some people not so much, some people maybe occasionally. Okay. Something that I have been thinking a lot about in our conversations with um, academics and with each other this year, um, those of us who are at Griffith, we have had lots of ch conversations about change in technology this year, lots. And I've had some colleagues say to me, I'm not sleeping at night, I'm so worried because I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to be on top of this and I have to teach other people how to use this. So that, those messages are really important for us to listen to because if we encounter those feelings in ourselves, in our colleagues, we're going to encounter them. So we work with academics, we're going to encounter them with academics. We're definitely going to encounter them with students, right? So sometimes it's about going slow to go fast. So we're working at the moment on with 10 postgraduate programs and four undergrad um, programs, all online. It's really, really important that we listen to the messages, the questions, so the concerns, all of those things. Um, we're all learning so much. Like here today, I can't tell you the number of things that we have learnt, that I have learned, I should say. And I'm looking around and I know like Lenka and I have, I can't, well, we learned and learned, didn't we? Like we go, what happens if you do this? What happens if you do that? Like Priscilla, Chandra, we just, people in our teams, people like Sally, we're experimenting all of the time. That's kind of, we have to accept that that's going to be what we have to do. Um, and we have to share what we're learning about. We have to really resource ourselves and get ready. So this is a guide. Um, and when you open the PowerPoint, um, this is linked. So the link to this, you can have a look at this online, um, is the guide that we embed in courses that are using Teams. So you can see that there's tabs there for the students and then the last tab is an instructor tab. And what um, oftentimes I'm the one who's forming these guides and I'm starting to build in that accessibility um, tab rather than tuck it at the end of FAQs or troubleshooting or something. Okay, uh, Gabby and Giuseppe mentioned Evergreen this morning and it's a challenge because you take screenshots and you make videos and then you open Teams tomorrow and Calendar is now called Meetings. <laughs> and, you know, and Jason showed this morning tiles and I'm thinking, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> So we have to be a little bit forgiving of ourselves and each other about how that looks, you know, how our guides look. And, you know, I'll say to you, no, no, you can't do that. Private channels aren't there. And you'll say, yeah, they've been there since last week, Ray, catch up. <laughs> okay. The last thing, absolutely critical, and this is a message no matter what um, teams uh, you're using, whether it's work or whether it's for learning, is to be present. So we really need to have a presence in there, particularly at the, in the early days of the team. Now, this poor guy, I don't um, know. He's, if you can't kind of see the color, he's in his pajamas. So he's doing the, um, you know, the newsreader thing, dressed from the waist up and yeah. So, um, who has felt on tap 24-7? Loads and loads of people. And the people who are saying no are very good at managing their um, messaging and separating things out. 
And um, it's very interesting because my daughter's just started an online course with Torrens University and she said, I'm not putting anything on my phone. So my phone is me and my personal life and not my study. So I thought, wow, that's a very conscious decision. So we need to make sure we manage our expectations, not just students' expectations, but um, I think I'm way over. Um, not just students' expectations, but our own expectations of ourselves. So be kind to yourself um, and communicate clearly about availability and response times. Okay, this is about being authentic, but also learning how to, getting the knack of communicating. And you can have a look at these in the team. There's some examples of some shots there. Okay, thank you.